This is our day five of the national qualification event. Uh, the team has been just sitting and waiting for two full days. And now we have a chance to uh, run the national qualification course for the second time. It's early in the morning. Stanford is passing its first gate. This gate actually used to be silver, it's but it's been painted black to make it more difficult. And in fact, yesterday we saw a number of teams crashing into this gate. DARPA magically manages to restore this gate and then put it up for a new race. Here we're in the high speed section, we're actually trying slightly more aggressive parameters today just to see um, what can be done on this course. Um, this course is still relatively simple compared to what we expect in the desert. Uh, so we can play with parameters and make the car a little bit faster here and there. Um, it's taking its turn at uh, its typical speed uh, and now heading for the second time towards the hay balls, which have been problematic for a number of teams. Uh, they're fairly narrow and fairly low obstacles into the tunnel uh, where the GPS outage hits and the car has to drive without GPS. It's been um, an overall uh, a good run for us. Uh, again, it's flawless. Uh, Stanford remains the only team that's, that's flawless at this point. Um, it also turns out that uh, our reported finishing time uh, seems to be just below nine minutes for this course which would make us the fastest uh, vehicle ever uh, on this course um, and also the, the only team that ever has been flawless for every single run. Um, here we see it swerve around the tires. It's done this before. It does it just about the same way. Uh, DARPA attempted to make this course a little bit more difficult. I already mentioned the uh, gate that was painted black. Uh, they also moved cars around a little bit. And they created um, a, a stretch that I think is really interesting and in that it really matches in terms of debris and an obstacle size. The desert roads much better than these parked cars or traffic cones. Uh, that's coming up in a minute. Uh, you'll see it. And Stanford, of course, uh, Stanley ma masses it just very gracefully. Here we go. Uh, this is the uh, slalom pass, uh, relatively tight turns in succession uh, to practice switchbacks in the mountains. Of course, there are no real mountains here. And in the background, you see the modified place. We now have a relatively wide open area in the RDDF, so there's much less guidance as to where to drive. There's a little turn required, and there's a lot of uh, 4x2s on the ground and a couple of tires. Um, we don't quite know whether they're meant to be obstacles or not. They certainly um, are unpleasant when driven over, and Stanley avoids them all. Uh, but I don't even think that they uh, count as an obstacle if a vehicle chooses to drive over them. And technically, they're very drivable. This is the final area, uh, two park cars. They've been moved a little bit, one to the right, one to the left, I guess. I don't quite exactly know. You see the vision module that I explained yesterday kicking in and doing its task. The cars pop up like Christmas trees. Stanley today chooses to our surprise to really zigzag these cars uh, at a safe distance. You can see it here. Uh, as we go on into the final straight stretch, uh, you can actually see Stanley uh, at its maximum allowed velocity at this point. That's why it's so slow. Heading towards the tank trap, there's a couple of new things before the tank trap, some debris. Uh, maybe DAPA thought this makes it more difficult for the vehicle to turn or to avoid the tank trap. Uh, certainly a motorcycle would have difficulties more than we do because we just have a regular SUV. It's very stable. So here we go. You can see the, the debris coming up in the vision system very nicely and standing drives over it. It avoids the tank trap just fine uh, and makes it just across the finishing line before it's being stopped.